Philippians chapter 2, and we'll start there, um, realizing that uh, we're not earning our salvation, but we are working from it. So this is something that is a constant tension, in case you haven't noticed, in the body of Christ. And it's, uh, it's something that we, uh, you're, you're always going to have to deal with this in your life, because I don't know if you've noticed this, but every day you wake up, you still have your body. Okay, so, you know, and, and I don't want to overemphasize the, the flesh and, and make it uh, uh, seem stronger than the grace of God because it's not. But then how many have noticed, too, that you, when you wake up in the morning, you still have to renew your mind? And that's not going to end until Christ returns or you die or I die, right? And what I mean by that is we throw our body off. Really, our body dies. We don't. Um, and so, I was even reading this morning in Second uh, Peter, I just love those epistles. There's so much depth of revelation in these things. Brother Hagin used to say to us, he said, you can bump along like they did uh, years ago during the gold rush. You can bump along and, uh, uh, through life, and he said, uh, you can go from stream to stream in the word, and you can get a little pan down there, and he said, you may find a little gold. He said, but if you really want to be rich you got to dig into the side of the hill. And that's the way it is in, in Scripture. I, you can, there are those who will do their daily reading, and they'll find some gold. Then there are those who will dig into the mountain, and you'll find a vein of gold. So when I wasn't here, I don't remember what Sunday it was now, but anyway, Mike preached everything. <laughs> I love it. Throw, throw Mike a softball, right? Okay, good morning. You're preaching three times. Go. All right. <clears throat> I'm telling you, he can take a licking. <laughs> Keep on ticking. <laughs> you should be glad I didn't call you. So anyway, I, w- I was thinking about this, but he mentioned this when I was watching him take up the offering. He said the, the whole time I had him doing that, his finances increased. Why? Dug into a mountain. So everything in the Word is designed to help us understand in our thinking the reality of the resurrection that's in our spirit. Walking that out is not pretty. Have you ever noticed it's a fight? Amen? It's a what? A fight of faith. Well, you say we have grace, but I just feel like, uh uh-huh, fight of faith. Okay, let's go to Romans 13. I know I had you in Philippians 2, but go to Romans 13. I want you to see this. Somebody's reading it to me. It's called the mute button. (laughs) The volume button, right? It's the technology it's taken over. <laughs> okay, so Romans chapter 13, verse number 11. And do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Now, if Paul had to tell that to the Romans, do you think he, we he need it today? Right? For now our salvation is nearer Then when we first believed, I wonder if it's nearer now. (laughs) You know, how many years later, right? Okay, verse 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Now, I am not a doom and gloom end timer. Now, I know there'll be plenty of doom and gloom around us, but I will not be a unbelieving feel sorry for myself, fake martyr of Christianity. Because near as I can tell, the apostles in their day did not get to the end of their life and go, well, we tried. It was just so hard. None of that. Did they acknowledge difficulty? They did. But they acknowledged grace over it. And that's what we are going to do. Because I don't want Jesus to bust through the clouds and find me going, God, please, where are you? What are we going to do? It's unbiblical. 
It's not my nature, and it's not yours. Well, you just don't know how hard it is. Actually, Jesus knows exactly how hard it is, and he walked through all of it, and he empowered us to overcome it. Everything we've been tempted in, he was, and he overcame it. And he didn't overcome it to go, look at me. Look what I can do. (laughs) You know what I mean? He didn't do that. He overcame it. Why? To give you the power to overcome it. To give me the power to overcome it, right? So we're not facing anything that's not common to man, including coronavirus, which which more than anything, guys, is a mental thing. Because so much of the church just lives in the news media. They don't even, you know, they do this. They watch 40 hours of garbage news, not even real news. And then afterwards, they read 15 minutes, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Okay, Lord, why isn't this word working for me? Why? Right? Okay, so the day is far spent. I mean, the, 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 night, the night is far spent, but what? He says the day is what? At hand. Well, that tells me I'm closer to the day than I am the night. Right? Okay, now, next verse, he says, therefore, let us what? Cast off the works of darkness and what? Put on the armor of light. Who's he talking to? Believers. Believers have to cast off darkness? Yes, they do. Well, we're under grace. We don't have darkness anymore. Wrong. You have flesh and you have a mind that can, be, that can squelch the light that is in you. Now, I'm, I agree with you in the spirit. You have no darkness in your spirit. I understand that. I understand that Jesus is not dwelling in your heart with demons. Okay? In your spirit, yes. But remember, we still live here. We're still in the tent. So if Paul had to tell this to the Romans, we have to hear it too. Which means every day I wake up, I have to choose not to be offended. Why? Because offense is present. Even if it's not present, even if my own flesh isn't rising up in those things, it can be in somebody else's and they can speak it. And guess what? How many have noticed that a fiery dart can come through another human? I mean, everybody that's married knows this. Why? Because we get all in our feelings about our relationship instead of all in our spirit. Right? In our natural thinking. I actually saw this this morning in prayer when I was praying. The Lord took me. Well, anyway, but I saw this in prayer. He, he took me back to that scripture. Set your mind on things above. It's like a TV, right? Junk. What channel are you on? Heaven. Yeah, above. Above channel. Hey, maybe we're starting something here. <laughs> it's time for new networks to come out anyway. And guys, listen, they're coming. Big time. There are things coming. There's such judgment that's coming down on the media. I mean, you, we don't even realize yet, but it's coming. Anyway, okay, so I'm supposed to set my mind on things above. So what does that mean? I have to go past the principalities and powers and wickedness in heavenly places. Right? Which means what? There's information available that if I don't get high enough, and I'm not talking about drugs, <laughs> if I don't get high enough in my thinking, I'll function as a believer with demon thoughts. And listen to me very carefully. Demon thoughts always appeal to your flesh. Always. And they are sly. Oh, he's good at what he does. I'd be scared if I didn't have knowledge here and the Holy Spirit. Right? So put on the armor of what? Light. Cast off. Cast off. Cast out. Don't function with. Reject. Get away from what? Darkness. As a believer, you don't work darkness, you work light. Right? That's where we work from. Okay, so he says this, verse 13. Let us walk, what? 
properly as in the, yeah, but there's, there's night all around us. Uh-huh. Let us walk. So what day am I walking in? I'm walking in the day of the resurrection within me. And you are too, right? Okay. I'm not going to focus on the fact that I haven't done it perfectly either. I'll acknowledge it, but that's where I will not focus there. And neither will you. Because you'll frustrate your faith if you do. Well, we need to be aware of sin. Being aware and meditating on and living in is two different things. You need to be more aware of your salvation than you do your sin. I'm going to say that again, and I'm going to let you thresh it out, okay? Because I'm going to do exactly what Paul did to Timothy. Remember this? He's getting ready to die, Paul is. Paul knows he's going to die. He knows he's close. Yet, Paul knows he finished his race. I think that's a goal for us. I'm supposed to know when I'm done. People say, well, you know, Jesus did it, Paul did it, and Peter wrote about it. That's three witnesses, I have enough. I'll know when I'm done. But anyway, okay, so, and I'm not done right now. (laughs) Okay. Although I am like Paul in some respects, I'm like, well, you know, it'd be better, Lord. Okay, so anyway. (laughs) Okay, so anyway, Paul says to Timothy, well, I'm going to (laughs) die. This is the Sean. This is the author's paraphrase. There it is. Yeah, I haven't written a book, but anyway. Sorry, that's an inside joke with Mike. All right, so he had to enlighten me. All right, so let's, let's think about this. All right, he says, I'm being what? Poured out like a drink offering. What does Paul know? Death's coming. He knows it. And I learned this from Dale. We were talking about this, but I learned this from my grandpa. My grandpa did this, guys. 11 years before my grandpa died, I was driving down the road with him. He said, yep, praying the other day. The Lord told me if I keep my nose clean, get another 11 years. He died at 91. He told me that when he was 80. Ooh. And my grandpa would shoot cuss you. But yet he knew the Lord. You say, what do you mean by shoot cuss? Farmer cuss. You ever met a farmer cusser? They use off-color words, and it's like, as a Christian, you're like, ooh, I don't think we should say that. But, you know, it's, it's shoot cussing. They don't mean anything by it, you know. But anyway, Paul said, I'm being poured out as a drink offering. He goes through this process, and he, he tells Timothy, look, you got to stand strong. you got to keep moving forward. You got to stand within and live from within out. Don't give up. I know you're scared, Timmy. You know, Timmy was scared, right? Because this is where we get, Paul said, uh, remember, you haven't been given a spirit of fear, Timmy. And I know you've been crying. (laughs) I love the Lord. He's so good to us. But he says, look, put on light. Don't be afraid. I'm going to pass away, but you're going to keep going. We have heaven to look forward to. There's a whole connection here of things that are coming about. Now, remind me what I was talking about, because there was something specific there I was going to go into. In fact, I'm going to... Let me me finish this. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust. So can Christians walk in revelry and drunkenness? Yes, they can. But you're not supposed to. If you live that way, you'll shorten your physical life. You'll shorten it. You will. You you won't go to hell. I'm not saying you'll go to hell. Now, here's the thing. You don't want to live in that stuff because it has an influence. And there are people that have lived in it so much that eventually they got to the place where they rejected Christ in their heart and they did go to hell. But... I think that's very, we've talked about this before, it's very difficult and it's not like, oh, I slipped on a banana peel and now I'm not saved. It's none of that. It's a decision that is made from the heart. You know one of the biggest problems with humanity is? They aren't honest with themselves. You know the biggest problem with Christians are? They're not honest with themselves. They don't want to deal with them. They want to deal with everybody else. Well, if these circumstances were right, that's all garbage. 
Paul, we've been looking at this in Philippians. Paul didn't write to the church and go, in, in Philippi, and go, I'm in prison, it's not fair. I'd be growing right now. I'd be doing things for the kingdom if I wasn't in prison. He did not do that, guys. We do that whiny little baby stuff. Oh my gosh, how many of you walk with the Lord for a while and you realize, oh my gosh, I've been sitting in a poopy diaper for two years. <laughs> I have been blaming my spouse for all my problems when really they're just a contributor. I'm the real problem. It's not my, it's my parents' fault. My parents, you, you realize that if you sow, it's my parents' fault, you'll reap in your kids to you. Sometimes you better just step up to the whipping post and take it like a man or woman depending, right? Because sometimes, like I was telling Dale before service, we were talking about my grandpa, sometimes you just need your butt kicked. And I don't know if you've read through the epistles, but the Holy Ghost will kick your butt and mine. I don't want to go to a church like that. I just want a patty cake church and patty cake along. Fine, but you'll have patty cake victories. In other words, you'll have none. Or if they do come, it'll all be the grace and mercy of God and none of your faith. And honestly, I don't want to get to the end of my life and the Lord look at my faith and go, well, you know, I mean, it's there. Not very strong. I don't want the Lord, you know, people think that the Holy Spirit stopped asking the questions Jesus did. Where's your faith? He has not. He has not changed. He's still doing it. Well, we're under grace. Yeah. And you access it by faith. See, the grace message in so many ways has just turned into, I'll do whatever I want and still make heaven. No, you won't. That's not true. You have to use your faith at the basest level of salvation. It isn't just, I'm a church member. No, no. I did good works. No, you didn't. Not by yourself. (laughs) There's only one way to do real good works. From within out, right? Okay, so... We see this here. We can walk in lewdness. We could walk in drunkenness. We could walk in revelry. We could walk in lust. How many know lust is not just sexual sins? Okay. Not in strife. What? You can't even live in strife. You're not supposed to. Listen to me. You cannot internally live in a fight with somebody else and never let them know. The Lord sees it. This is the amazing thing that people don't realize. And actually, I think John Bevere has the strongest and best revelation on the grace of God that I've seen in the current generations. I mean, there are others that are good. But I think John Bevere's is the best. If you allow internal strife to live in you, you don't understand Christ in you and the grace that is in you. I'm not saying the temptation can't come. I'm saying you can't let it live in you. You're hindering your faith, which is hindering what? Your ability to receive from the Lord, right? Now watch, people will do this. They'll go, I believe in God, but they're fighting with their spouse. The Bible says that husbands are to love their wife and and wives are to love their husbands. And it says, why? That your prayers be not, oh, so God ignores that verse for you or me. I can't be mad at Heidi. I can't just, would she do something wrong to you? The same devil that comes to you when, when, when I, when somebody does something wrong, you know, in our relationship, me and Heidi, the same devil that comes to you comes to me. Can you believe she did that? You should not talk to her. Now, sometimes you should shut your mouth until you get a hold of your flesh. And then there's this. How many, how many have the enemy do this to you? You be driving, nothing on your mind. Here comes a thought. Doo! Bunk! They did do that to me. <laughs> then all of a sudden you're driving 45 and it's like 95. <laughs> that thought came from Satan and stirred up my flesh. And then the, then the false 
the angel of light will appear. And he'll go, you know, in Scripture, that's not right that they did that. Am I hitting a nerve or what? Am I the only one that's experienced this? No, we got to throw off what? Darkness and put on. I got I to gotta capture every thought in my head and control the landscape and the building of the city in my mind. It has to be developed out of the resurrection, right? Okay? And we are talking about complaining. Don't, get, don't think we're not. All right. So, not in strife and envy. So, you can, I, can't be, I can't be envious. I can't strife. I can't have either of these. None. Because I'm a disciple. I'm not just a convert. Now, if I just want to sit and poop <laughs> and, just, and have somebody else changing my stinking diaper as a Christian my whole life, I can do it. And I will die young. And I will not fulfill the call of God in my life. And listen to me, I will suffer loss. Well, I don't don't like thinking about that. You have to think about what you don't like thinking about. Really, I should say what your flesh doesn't like thinking about. If you're really going to have a relationship with the Lord, if I'm really going to have a relationship with my wife or with and have a close working relationship in these areas, I cannot close off part of my being to her or to the Lord. I cannot say, you can't talk to me about this because it hurts too much. If you do that with a person, you're doing it with the Lord. People say, well, no, if the Lord wants to tell me something, He will. You're wrong. He will tell you if you want to listen. People say, oh, how do you know that? Because Paul said it repeatedly. Jesus said it repeatedly. What did Jesus say? He said, I want to tell a lot of things to you, but you're just not ready. Paul said, I want to tell you some things, but we got to go all the way back, and i got to shake up and warm the bottle and test it on my hand to make sure it's not going to hurt you. How many did that with your kids? <laughs> yeah, you know. How many did it and it was like so hot it burned you? Because I never did that, but I mean, <laughs> you know, it's like, ah! <laughs> don't give them that one. <laughs> you know what I mean? In other words, we're in leadership class right now. So how are we going to grow? How are we going to apply these things to our lives? I'm with you. Now, I get the distinct pleasure of being the person that gets to say it like I know it and do it perfectly. No, I'm anointed to do this. I still have to walk it out. And guess what, guys? There's no special anointing. I've looked for it in my day-to-day. I get done preaching. I'm like, oh, yeah, that was so good. And then I screw up seven times before I get home. I'm like, Lord. And he's like, well, come talk to me about it. And I'll correct your and wipe your little rear end, boy. (laughs) Yes, sir. All right, let's go to the whipping post. I love the whipping post. Let's get there. Why? Because the Lord disciplines those he... Oh, so if if I've never been... I'm not being disciplined by the Lord, I'm not being loved like I should be. So one of two things is happening. Either I'm not going to the post. Well, I know the Lord will discipline me, so it's not him. must be me. Ay, ay, ay. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I know the Lord loves me because he yells at me sometimes. <laughs> he corrects me. And how many know the Lord never makes a mistake in his correction? He just doesn't do it out of raw emotion, like, I can't take it anymore. You know, Herb's dead. <laughs> it's not like that. He, he's always under control, but he is always truthful. Well, I just don't want to hear that. Then he won't force himself into it. But there are times, for me, I know I've prayed this prayer in secret many times. You try not to, you don't want to pray in publicly because people will think they're God and they need to come answer the prayer. But I've prayed in secret many times. Okay, Lord, where am I? Show me. Amen? Where am I screwed up here? And everybody can pray that prayer with effectiveness because you all have thinking that is screwed up. And so do I. Amen? All right. So he says, not in strife, not in envy. Watch this verse, the last verse here. I think it's verse 14. I write my Bible so much I can't see the numbers sometimes. All right. 
but put on the what? Lord Jesus Christ, which means you have to what? Put him on. He doesn't automatically appear. Well, we're under grace. It should just happen. That's not how this works. We have to put him on. Well, I'm not... You, now listen, you're not putting him on to earn your salvation. You're putting him on because you have one. Because you have salvation, you're putting him on. I, you say, why do you have to hit that over and over? Because there's so much legalism taught. And people think, they think, well, if I don't, uh, if I don't put him on, I'm not going to be saved. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, you are saved, put this on. Because it's who you are. Well, I don't feel like it. Well, that's a whole different avenue. Do you have to feel like putting clothes on in the morning to put them on? No. <laughs> and we're all grateful. You just do it, right? Okay. So put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make what? No provision for the to fulfill its what does your flesh have? It has lusts. My flesh, even though I'm born again and I have the nature of God, my flesh and your flesh has lusts. And I'm don't just think in terms of uh, pornography and stuff like that. Lusts are any desire of the flesh. You can have your, the lusts of your flesh under control in one area and not in another. Even though you have the grace to control all those areas. Isn't it wonderful we get to grow? You know, it's like God didn't leave us down here to uh, just by, you know, with nothing to do. Like, well, you're saved, it's good, you know. No, every day we're proving ourselves faith-wise to our Father. Right? Or we're drawing on mercy because we, we're like, today I'm going to put on the flesh and not the armor of light. And I'm going to make, how many have done this unintentionally? You didn't do it out of maliciousness or anything like that, although I think I have done it. Some, sometimes I have to watch myself because there are times where I'm like, Lord, just there's the dead man right there. Let me raise him. I'll take care of this. Vengeance is not yours, Lord. It's mine. <laughs> so what do you know about me? I have to watch myself in that area because I, I, I don't really, I've never really minded fighting if I had a cause. Now that's a good thing if I keep it in the right vein. <laughs> but if I let it get in the wrong vein, I mean, I did. I beat up the neighbor boys. When I was growing up. Why? I don't remember why. <laughs> but they were twin boys. <laughs> and it was me versus them. And I got them both. I got them good. <laughs> you know, two on one. Why? I didn't really, you know, I didn't go looking for the fight, but I was like, oh, we're in it. Let's just do it. Let's see what happens. Are you that, am I the only one that's that way? Sometimes I'm like, I don't really you know, know that I have a for sure cause, but let's find out what happens. I am, I'm very this way, and this is something that Mike has said over and over again through the years of teaching, and then also to me personally, but he wants to know what the consequence is. How many have ever sat down, thought through the consequence, and went, I'm going. I have done it, <laughs> and it has cost me <laughs> multiple times. So, put on light, right? Okay, let's go to Philippians 2. I never did get to that Timothy spot. There was something there that I wanted to get to, and I never did. <clears throat> I was in a vein of thought, and anybody remember what it is, or did I take us too far the other direction? Thank you, Lord. All right, well, Philippians chapter 2. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. 
Verse 2, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse number 14. Do all things without what? Complaining and disputing. Now watch, I'm going to read down through verse uh, 16. He says, that you may be become what? Blameless and... Now this should be a goal of ours. If we're yielding to the Spirit, we're harmless. That doesn't mean you won't hurt somebody's feelings. It means you won't harm them. Okay? So we got to get this because there's a balance here that's missing in the church. It's, it's because of the uh, people think that God is just mercy only. Last time I checked, he's still a judge. Okay? So we got to be aware of this. And this is where we live our faith out in fear and trembling. Okay, so that you may become what? Blameless and harmless. So you can be blameless if you're functioning from a place of non-complaining and non-disputing. Children of God, so these are what? Children of God. So this is not heathens. Without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. So this is not the common flow. How many of you know that thankfulness is not the common flow among the world or the church? Okay? All right? It's not. All right? Because we live in a crooked and perverse generation and most people yield to the world. Among whom you shine as what? Lights. What if you're complaining? You're not shining. Right? If I'm complaining about everything, what am I not doing? I'm not shining, right? What are my words imparting if I'm complaining? Ooh, right? Dangerous. All right. <clears throat> We're to shine as lights in the world. Notice it doesn't happen automatically. You have to turn the light on. Okay? Holding fast the word of what? Life, so that, Paul says, I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Now, here's something you don't ever hear preachers preach about. What is Paul saying to them? Is this Paul manipulating them? But, but in our society today, that's what comes up, right? Well, you can't say that like that. You're just trying to manipulate me. So you're telling me, Paul, that, that your, end, get your end in all of this and, and is, could be vanity if I don't do my part? Uh-huh. That's exactly what the Holy Spirit's saying. In other words, Paul's like, I, I hope I didn't waste my time with you. It's a nice verse, isn't it? It's like everybody's like, oh, I never read it like that before. I know. See, we dig into the side of the mountain to find the vein. How many like a vein of gold? Do you know there's tons of dirt around it? <laughs> this is what they told us at Rama, and it was true. They were right. Inside of every person is gold but you have to remove a ton of dirt to find it. Well, I don't want it to be that way. I want my relationship to be 15-minute sermons, one-hour services, and scripture cards. Monday, rejoice in the Lord. Tuesday, Jesus wept. (laughs) Last time I checked, that's not how relationships get deep. You got to live together, right? Okay? And I'm not talking about just, it's a fellowship. I'm not talking about just a, a time in the day. You should have a time in the day where you're, you're setting your flesh under you. You're presenting your body a living sacrifice for the day. You're fellowshipping with the Lord specifically in his word and in prayer. And then from that place, you walk with him all day long right? Functioning in relationship with him as primary, above your family, above your kids, above your job, above your whatever, whatever it is, I don't care, pick it, okay? Letting him be Lord. And when we do that, we won't complain. What is complaining? Complaining is murmuring, grudging, grumbling, Secret debate, secret displeasure. This is where most of this stuff goes on is in secret. Not openly avowed. It means to mutter. One translation of the word actually means the indistinct sounds of a baby bird. 
like the undertone of, this is what complaining is. How many of you have watched the old cartoons? You know, where they never, they're not going to cuss, but you know they're cussing in the cartoon. Bugs Bunny, all that. You know, rah, rah, rah. What, is, uh, what is the guy with the mustache? Yosemite Sam, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, the, and it's undertones, that's grumbling. I can't believe they said that to me. There's onions on my cheeseburger, and I ordered no onions in there. <laughs> Do all things without what? A secret debate among people. This happens in the church. People will go out to dinner and have filet a pastor. Who hit that? Was that uh, Jim Hockaday or was it Leanne? Somebody here hit that. They said it. And I thought, hey, that's pretty good. Can you believe me? Can you? I can't believe they're they're over the worship team, and they did this, this, and this, and they get together. Yeah, build a case. A case of what? Because there's an accuser, and there's an advocate. Which one is my conversation following? And I'm not talking about dealing with issues and correction. I love this. They were right. They, we're right in the middle of maturity right here. Right? Because we're dealing with scriptures that people don't want to deal with. But I'll just say this. I've watched strife in a church tear the snot out of that church. And we all shouted, Ooh, the victory. The prophetic words over our lives. And we had services where God manifested so strong. I mean, you'd, be, you'd have to be, you know, completely rebellious against God to not recognize he's there. And yet the enemy stopped many things because of yeah, 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 yeah. And it isn't, now here's the, here's the kicker in it, guys. It's not because the devil's stronger. We can shout about the power, but if we don't live in it, there'll be no victory. How frustrating is that to what you know the prophetic word is over your life? You know, this is why 1 Corinthians 13 was written. You, do you ever, have you ever done the inventory before the description of love? Prophecy, faith, prosperity, money. He hits it all before he goes to love. Why? Why? Why do that? What's the point? He's telling you, if you don't do this, all of that is which means what? <clears throat> it means God isn't impressed with my prophecy. We talked about this before. Remember in, on a Wednesday night, we talked about the fact that, um, that uh, uh, you can actually function in a gift, I can, and not have character, and you'll receive something if your heart's right. And yet I could be exposed as an adulterer or a money hungry or a blasphemer. I could, be, I could go under, even though in the midst of the meeting, you felt the gift work and it operated for you. Now watch, I can take your growth and, your, and God moving in your life and you changing, maturing, and developing as a sign that I'm still living right even though I'm living in sin behind. I can go, oh, well, yeah, I mean, the church grew. Uh-uh. God is amazing. He delineates. He 
I can, f- and, and it's, I, I don't know how to explain it, okay? So I am believing God, so you believe with me, but, and maybe you know and you can enlighten me. I, I don't understand why it does, other than the only thing that I can, the only conclusion that I've been able to come to is, God loves the people so much that my gift will operate for your sake, even though I'm a ding-dong. You say, you think this way? Yeah, and I get afraid. I do, guys. I'm telling you, because when you're, and I'm not talking about public services. When I'm by myself with the Lord, I go, uh, okay. Have you ever been reading your Bible and start trembling? I have. And it's not because I'm like, oh, spiritual. It's because I'm afraid Because you see into who he is, and you know he loves you. But you look at him and you go, okay, the Lord, he is God. Now, now, okay, let's go over, let's end right here. In, uh, go over to, uh, oh, 1 Corinthians 10, 1, we'll end right here. Verse 1. And this is, because I, I tried to go into Hebrews two weeks or three weeks ago, I don't remember what it was, and I got in trouble, and the Lord said, no, you're going to define complaining more, and I thought, Lord, they're going to love that. He said, you need it. Me, talking to me, but we need it, okay? So why put this stuff in the scripture so we can ignore it? Why bother? I mean, why bother? Watch what Paul does. 1 Corinthians 10. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud. This is 1 Corinthians 10, 1. All passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and then in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. And the rock was what? Christ. Verse 5. But with most of them, God was what? For their bodies were... Well, I don't want to read that verse. Nobody does. Why put it in there? Why in the New Testament? Well, we're under grace. Bodies don't scatter anymore. Wrong. They still do. You ever read about Ananias and Sapphira? Scattering bodies. Do you know what came on that church after they died? Great fear. Well, I don't want to talk about fear. Why? It's a, it's a grace. The fear of the Lord. So why write this about God to the Corinthians? What is Paul doing? Oh, the preacher. He's taking the scripture and he's threatening the people. This is the attitude that's in the American church right now. Well, it's not the Holy Ghost anymore. Oh, they they say that, but really they're manipulating. So you're judging someone's heart without knowing their heart. I think it would be better for us and for me if I just judged myself. And let the Lord deal with the rest, right? And receive understanding from his perspective. Why write this? This is coming through the guy who had the greatest revelation of grace. Why put them in remembrance of this? Why say this? Why in Corinthians does Paul say, look, the reason why many of you are sick and weakly and die prematurely is because you don't even understand the Lord's body and blood. Well, they're under grace. They shouldn't be sick, die prematurely, and be weak. No, they shouldn't be. You're right. But why bring it up? If it's all just automatically going to happen, and we're all under the fun fountain of grace, why talk about this? Why bring it up? And this is what we're going to get into, because I like growing, even if it hurts my flesh. How many know growing always hurts your flesh? Hey, glory. Glory. So, in all that God did for the children of Israel, miracle after miracle, they never responded in faith to him. This produced a scattering of bodies in the wilderness that never walked into the promised land. But yet they were saved. Right? Verse 6. Now these things became our... Became our what? These things became our 
examples. For the New Testament church, Yowza. It's so good, isn't it? You can feel it. It's just like, boom. Can't we laugh some more? Sure, after we cry. Weeping may endure in the night, but joy comes in the morning. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to cry, amen? And go, Lord, I'm sorry. So these became our examples for what reason? To the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. What other truth do we know? We know that Lord, the Lord's long-suffering, right? So even in the midst of our growth, what will we have? Long-suffering from him, right? But listen to me, it's not eternal suffering. Now, if we don't get a hold of our flesh, and notice we're, guys, I'm so excited that I'm not teaching you on, uh, you know, overeating right now. I mean, we're dealing with a serious issue, complaining. It's serious. But at least it's not some rinky-dink issue. Right? It could be, you know, you guys need to stop committing adultery. Well, that would happen in a church. Read Corinthians. <laughs> Read all the epistles. That happens to, with Christians? Yes. Why? They're not controlling their flesh. Were you saying they're unsafe? No, I'm saying they're not living out of the ability that they have within them to, to be saved. But we're talking about complaining. Why? I don't know about you, but I want to see the glory of God move. And I, listen to me, I do not want to move of God and then it gets torn apart by the devil because of a bunch of fleshy, carnal leadership. is that what you want in your life? You want a move of God for a while and then everything falls apart because the devil is able to... You want to be scattered in the wilderness? No thanks, I'm not scattering. This church doesn't scatter bodies. As a group, as a whole, we hold the line. I know we hear that for the presidency, but you understand. We hold the line, amen? Because we are going to be what? We are going to be thankful. Rejoice in the Lord. <laughs> right? Well, how could this produce a deep move of God? Every time, if you read through Acts, there's always reverence and holiness. Always. So let's practice this, and when we miss it, let's repent and go back to practicing it. And realize and hold this thought in your head. Don't let the devil change your mind on this. God is for me, not against me. Amen? Amen? Because I'm not preaching condemnation, I'm preaching conviction. Amen? To where we don't let anything, we just let the Holy Spirit lead us in everything. Praise the Lord. 